So guys and girls, welcome back to the second video of Lord of the Rings, the living card game. I'm Dyeworm and I'm going to actually play a game this time. Because, you know, gameplay is fun. And uh, we're not going to do the tutorial. Uh, the tutorial is a little boring. But what we will do is just the first quest. And we will be picking the starter deck. And I'll just explain along the way how this game actually works. So, here you pick your quest. This is the main quest, it is called The Shadows Reach. And it consists of five parts. And here you see uh, basically what happens after the tutorial. This one is called an Adder Cop. Adder Cop, please excuse my pronunciation of uh, Middle Earth words and terminology. I mean, I watched the movies and I actually read the books too, but yeah, there are so many names that are, you know, that can be pronounced in multiple ways that like Glowin, is it Glowin? Is it Glowin? I have no idea. I think Glowin. So, single player, it starts connecting with the server and then it sets you up against the AI. After arriving at Beyond's Hall, you've learned the famous Bilbo Baggins was taken by Mirkwood Spiders mere hours ago. Without hesitation, you volunteer to find and retrieve the Hobbit, hopefully before he's consumed, or worse. And so you find yourself before Greenwood the Great, that the wary and the wise call Mirkwood. A sleeping evil once inhabited the Greenwood, but was purged many years ago. The forest has since known a period of peace and the return of wholesome life. As the shadows now gather under the trees, you sense a foulness on the air. You fear evil may have returned to this realm. So right off the bat guys, what is really impressive here I think is the voice acting. Also, most of the voice acting done in game when you have the cards is pretty good. And that is important because this is the only thing that basically immerses you into this game. And um, yeah, it actually works very well, at least for me. You begin to search for clues as to which direction the spiders took Bilbo. There are ample signs of recent struggle in the small glade, and several of the Hobbit's possessions are strewn about. After a few moments, you notice a gleam of metal on the forest floor. Perhaps a sign. You're about to investigate. As several giant spiders creep into the glade. They don't seem at all interested in assisting the search. Quite the contrary. If by life or death I can save you, I will. Mine is the choice of Luthien. My axe is restless in my hands. Alright, this is the first round of Mulligan, so here you can pick a few cards that you want to keep, or rather pick a few cards that you don't want to keep. So for example, I'm going to get rid of the buffs for now, because I learned that at the start of the game it is better to go uh, for a few minions and some extra presence on the board. So the sneak attack could be decent, the gaining strength maybe, but... I'm just gonna fish for some uh, for some minions. So we're now in the adventure phase, and the way this works is that you take turns, um, but then like you take turns in terms of action. So I can do one thing, for example, attack or something like that. Um, but then uh, it's Sauron's turn and then he can do one thing. So a thing that counts as one thing is for example play a card, uh, do an attack and that, and that kind of thing. So I think I will just go for some minions and do a sneak attack. This will summon a random ally. Uh, so it's a bit of RNG here. And the ally gains fleeting. You'll find no better in than the prancing pony. And fleeting means that at the end of the uh, turn, this guy is gone. So we have the Barlaman Butterbur. He has a power, 
which is this red thing over here, I can spend one of my player resources to draw a card. And um, apart from that, the values that you see over here are my attack in blue, my health in red, and my fate in yellow, willpower value. And I can use it to fill the fate bar over here. Or I can use it to attack these kind of things. These are hazards or, uh, yeah, basically things you can resolve. So I have to spend six willpower on this and then I receive the glint of steel. Examine the stage gleam under the leaves, which was also talked about in the introduction. Here over on the right, you see the thread bar. At 50, we lose the game. At the end of each turn, I'm getting one threat, and there's also other things that can cause you to either increase threat or decrease threat. And then at certain points here, you see 35, 40, 45, um, something will happen because of the threat level. So at level 35, Sauron will summon three forest spiders. So you need to be aware of that, because if he does that and you have not taken it into account, then you're gonna be up for a tough time there because suddenly you have to deal with three spiders. Um, on my end, however, I can get some fate events. For example, look through Bilbo's pack to find some supplies. For four fate, I can exhaust up to two spiders and at seven, Glowin joins my party and that's pretty good. So exhausting means that the character cannot do anything anymore. He's grayed out. So this spider just attacked this guy and now he's exhausted. So he's not doing anything anymore for this round. Now it's my turn. So I'm going to attack this spider with Gimli over here. It should kill him because I'm doing three damage and the guy has three health. And because they're blocking over here, you can see that um, I cannot attack anything but the guy that is defending currently. So this is the same as Taunt in Hearthstone. Now I can just either... I think I'll just play a card and deal some damage on arrival. You breathe so loud I could shoot you in the dark. He gets instantly killed, but that is fine because now I can just take down this guy if I want to. Um, but I could also, for example, buff myself. So during upkeep, we'll, we'll get to that. But then I restore one health. So I could, for example, just put this on Gimli. And then he will regenerate over time. This is a hazard which is played by Sauron and this is a sort of debuff and if I leave it up then each ally that enters play is exhausted and that's what we obviously don't want so I'm going to kill it with Harwin and now he's buffing up a minion so all of a sudden this minion has six well it's not great of course but okay Um, I think I will not attack because he's only got one attack. I think I will just use it to resolve the glint of steel. And I think we'll do the same with my buddy Aragorn. He cannot stand alone. There we go. So you see fleeting, the guy is gone. And this is the upkeep phase. So... Upkeep is basically the phase between two rounds and because of Arwen, this is uh, one of my three heroes, right? Aragorn, Arla, Ar Arwen and uh, Gimli. They all have their special powers and some of them are reflected during upkeep. So because of Arwen, I can restore one health to a character. Um, also during upkeep, Gimli, or sorry, yeah Gimli, will restore one health because of the buff I gave him earlier. 
So we're just going to use this on Arlen. Gimli is healing himself. And I think we're just going to add another minion here to the board. My axe swings too. The power of Gimli is that whenever he's attacked, he gains another attack. So now he's got three. And we could attack if we want to, but we can also just have this guy defend. Then he gets these shields and he basically receives taunt. So there you go, just as planned. Which means now that I can just kill this guy if I want to. Uh, or I could resolve the glint of steel. Which might not be a bad idea either. So here it is, the glint of steel. Lying on the forest floor is a small elven blade, beautiful, strong and light. And it is Bilbo's sword, otherwise known as Sting of course. So now Sting is a card that I get and it's a weapon. And I can use it to buff one of my characters. Doesn't need to be a hero, but it's, well, it's a good idea to buff your heroes. Because they can use it very well usually. I think for now we will just kill this guy. Yeah, and this is a little annoying. Because I have to basically resolve this. I serve no man. And what Aragorn can do as a hero power is he can spend one resource by using this and then he can take another turn here. I serve no man. Yeah, and I could do two things. I could travel um, to the next stage because here I'm done. Or I could, well, basically go on and try and buff myself a little bit more or maybe increase my board presence with things like that. But I think uh, traveling for now is fine. We will leave these guys behind and um, that's just I think totally fine. So let's travel to the next part. Bilbo's mind must have been clear during the first moments after his capture. You notice that he slid his sword along the undergrowth as he was hauled away. When the spider's poison immobilized him, he must have dropped Sting. Encouraged, you venture into the shadowy green-gray wilderness that is Mirkwood. The small cocoon has dropped before the lady. Ha! Eats it, my lady! Scrumptious it is! Taste! Sweet! <laughs> the skinny creature squeals in pleasure and anticipation jumping to and fro on arms and legs as if a spider himself. The creature gives the cocoon a kick. False it is! Badlands! Trickster! Thief! Cheater! Adam! Adam! Eats it! Eats it! The enormous spider moves to hover over the cocoon. Spear-sized mandibles emerge slowly from its dripping maw. Suck it to bones, is lady! No hanging this, or drying as needed! Not like tough dwarves, is, or tricky elves! Is. Sweet and juicy hobbities! Just leave clothes, my lady. Ow! Ow! For precious, precious is in its pockets, is my precious! spider monstrosity is about to delve into her meal when a sudden noise is heard from the edge of the lair flapping its hands nervously and bobbing its scrawny neck the creature pleads oh, don't listen to what the noises my lady eat eat while habit is warms someone has arrived and the spiders move to greet them 
For hours you delve into the menacing forest. Thorny undergrowth and sticky crawlers grab at you as if with minds of their own. A subtle change in the echo of the wood heralds a change in scenery, and you soon come upon a dark, gurgling stream. While the watery smells and soothing sounds relax you, you've been warned not to trust any water in Mirkwood, save for that gathered from fresh rain. The spiders must have crossed the stream by traversing the canopies above, but how will you cross? A nearby dead tree may be the answer. You attempt to push at the dry trunk, hoping for it to fall and bridge the stream. Unfortunately, your efforts attract the local wildlife. So guys, here we are again. What I really like about this is that it's just so well done. Like the voice acting is great. And then also um, the next scenario that is laid out in front of you just makes perfect sense. So that's good. Then the question is, who are we going to try and heal and maybe also try and protect? Because apparently, especially this bear is going to hurt. So we could try and save this guy. I think we will. And maybe let... Hmm. We can let Argorn tank a little bit here. Yeah, that's what I thought. So the bear is attacking him. That's fine. Now we can kill the bear with our dwarf. Baruch Kazak, fine. Um, barely surviving this guy, but he's still alive, so that's good. We are killing that other over there. Yeah, this gets a little annoying. So we have two hazards in play currently. This is the most dangerous one. By the end of the round, Sauron gains another threat. And this is what you really want to avoid over here. Especially these kind of things. So the three forest spiders will still be summoned at some point. But um, yeah. We'll see. So what can we do? Well, we can give someone a weapon. But I think we should really focus on some more some more guys in play so I'm going to kill this hazard for sure oh, he gets the bad stalwart that's fine afterwards Sauron will probably pass because he's out of resources so there's not much he can do now I think we'll just pull in the warden here not on my watch And then we have a choice. We can either just attack or try and already resolve some of these hazards. Um, maybe that is not such a bad idea to go for these hazards. So, who are we gonna heal? I think we'll try and keep healing the the dwarf here. So let's kill the bats first. And then resolve this hazard. Alright, there goes my attachment, so now I don't have healing anymore. It's not great, but it's not the worst either. I can buff one of my heroes, which I think I'll do. So I get this guy or that guy. I'll give Aragorn a sting. He passes, so... What we can do now is just resolve this quest. Use Aragorn's power to simply go again. No man. 
And this guy I will have on blocking duty and then just travel. You see, I'm not really bothered currently with this fate meter. Even though 7 fate, I get an extra ally. But it's also quite worth it to travel quickly so that you don't get a ton of threat. Because now it's at 34. If I would have waited one more turn, it would have been at the 35 and then, the stream with you know. Splintery crack. You use the fallen trunk to step across. Careful to not slip. What could cause wild creatures to attack so? Perhaps the corrupted stream is their main source of water. As you jump off the trunk on the far side, a deep rumble greets you. For a brief moment, you wonder what could make such a sound. But only for a brief moment. For out of the shadows shambles an enormous black bear. It roars. The sound is staggering. It fills the air like a living thing, terrifying and primordial. The impact of the roar sends you reeling backwards, almost into the stream. It charges. An avalanche of fur, teeth and claws. Alright, so this is more of a boss battle kind of thing. Kyrus is the bear over here. But as you can see, I kept all the status effects of the last round. So this guy is still blocking. Uh, Aragorn still has his weapon, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna keep my minions healthy here. And the question is what we will do, but... Um, so this sucks a little bit. There's gonna be three forced fighters in play and that is just not gonna be great. We can also invest in some fate, so we can get two more allies, uh, Glowin and Grimbjorn. That might not be a bad idea, however, this, this guy is... Well, this, it's gonna hurt. So summon three four spiders. Uh, at 36, two wild bears enter play. It's also not what you want. So I think I can deal with a few forest spiders, but the wild bears, that's not going to be great. I think we're just going to start off with an attack. No, we're going to start off with the debuff card here. I'm going to exhaust the next enemy that enters play. So the first minion that Sauron plays now will be exhausted and I don't really have to deal with it. So we can just kill him. I think I have three, four. Yes, I have exactly enough damage. Well, it's okay. He cannot stand alone. Yeah, so that's something you have to kill. But is it immediately deactivated? So that's that's good. Um, because otherwise he gains another threat, so he'll be at 36. So I just have to kill this. Oh. That sucks. Okay, so... Up next is gonna be a bunch of minions, really. I think what we're going to do is just use Aragorn's power, kill this guy, travel... He cannot stand alone. And hope not too many of them follow me. That's fine. This guy will probably kill off either him. Well, probably kill off him. We'll see about that though. I could try and prevent it by blocking, but I don't really see too much use, so. I think we're fine over there. She's just gonna use the fate button to get some the fate meter filled. Yeah, that's okay. And we will be traveling. 
So you see two fate events here activated. Not great, but we'll see what happens in the next round. Before the monotony of the forest claws at you again, you come upon a sudden clearing. The sluggish breeze and one grey light of the dell are a welcome change from the humid twilight of the forest. On the far side of the clearing, you spy what you've been looking for. A group of large spiders hovering over a tightly wound cocoon. It's time for a rescue. So, the final encounter. Time for a rescue. We need to defeat every enemy. And it summons three more forest spiders. Which sucks. But let's see how far we get. I'm just gonna add some more people. And I might have these guys simply block. Might not be a bad idea. And we can deal some damage too if we want to. For example, to that guy. You breathe so loud I could shoot you in the dark. The AI tends to just immediately go for low health characters, which I think makes sense. Uh, but it's also relatively easy. Relatively easy to predict at least what is going to happen. I think we will block one attack with this guy. Because Aragorn really needs to live. Maybe block one with this guy too. Yep, okay. We're sort of okay here. Okay, he died. That's not great, but it's not the worst either. I think I'll use Aragorn to just kill two spiders here. He cannot stand alone. Well, I guess we'll kill a bird then. I serve no man. Yeah, there's not much I can do about that one currently. Do I want to draw cards? No, I think I'm going to shield. Aragorn, so he doesn't die. And heal him as well. Okay, this is pretty decent. This is a guard, so he will already come with the with the shields and the taunts. Which is good. Hmm. Let's just reduce this guy from attacking. Yeah, that was to be expected, I suppose, but it's sort of okay. And let's exhaust the next enemy. Another guy down. So I'm killing this guy because he does the most damage. Hmm. Oh, I still need to do this? Oof. 
Okay, well, we're gonna do this then. Yeah, now there's another threat event. So they're defeating every ally in play. Now the good thing is I suppose that I had no allies in play. How may I serve? But all in all, this isn't going great, you could say. As I'm sure you've noticed by now. I'm barely surviving, but we're, we're okay-ish, I guess. So I'm going to block. And then I only need to block this guy from killing me. Which I'll do with Aragorn. And I think I'm just going to get Gloin in play, actually, because... This is getting a little out of hand. Not good. We do not escape the shadows of these times. Yeah, so I'm gonna have Gloin block. And Aragorn block as well. So it's gonna be tight, guys. Uh, we definitely need to restore some health to Armin. It's called Arkosh from each player's deck. Hmm. Let's throw down the Warden and immediately block. Probably the best watch. chance that we have. Um, is there a spider that can kill Arben? No. Okay. So we should definitely kill. That guy. No There's only two left. Farewell. Nah, there goes my healer, but that's sort of okay. Let's kill this one so he doesn't attack anymore this round. Discard every event card in each player's hand. Yeah. It's fine. I'm gonna kill this so he doesn't oh, get to 45 threat over there. Oh. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, so now the 45 threat event is coming here. Discard all cards from each player's deck, so... That's my deck. Great. No more deck for me. But I think we'll live. We're slowly stabilizing. I am going to... At 50 we die, so I have roughly three more turns to fix this, but I think we'll just be alright, so... Let's see... Let's kill this guy... And... There... Okay, so we have a surprising rescue. And it's the quest, guys. Lady and her brood are gathered at the edge of their lair. A band of orcs and goblins have emerged from the trees. Some heave empty wagons, others carry torches. A huge orc trumps to stand before the lady. Oh, the moon is full, Spidey. Uthak comes to collect! He snarls. The lady chitters at her lieutenants who rush back into the webs. 
The spiders soon return with web-wrapped cocoons, depositing them in front of the orc captain. Goblins rush to gather the cocoons, loading them into carts. As the last cocoons are loaded, a hooded goblin begins screeching at Uthak, pointing to a parchment full of hash marks. Uthak glares at the yelling goblin for a moment, and blinks and pivots back to the lady. We won short, Leggy! The orc's grainy voice is mild, but laced with promise of violence. Cold masters don't like short. Uthak don't like short. We had deal. After recovering, Will Elk thanked you profusely. Over the past few months, he tells you, a number of tribesmen have gone mysteriously absent. He suspects they've fallen prey to similar circumstances, but offers no explanation as to why the great spiders have suddenly become so daring. Afraid to return home through the forest alone, Will Elk offers to join you, and suggests which direction the spiders were taking him. Somewhere under the never-ending trees before you, an old hobbit awaits rescue. So that's it guys, this is how we did. Uh, not very well, as I'm sure you've noticed. But here you can see um, how many points you would possibly get for this mission. So my final threat level was pretty high, 46. Which means I didn't get a lot of points for that. At least I had 3 surviving heroes, barely. Uh, surviving heroes health. Uh, the more health your heroes have at the end of the game, the more points you get. Hazards resolve. So these are all the hazards that Sauron drops. Um, I think we resolved all of them, so that's good. 40 points for that. However, we didn't use a lot of Fate events, which is the yellow bar on the left. Which only got us 10 points. So our total, total reward is 157 uh, these are just Valor points and they are added to your total amount of Valor points. So as long as you complete the mission you're always getting Valor points. You can do this as often as you want and with as many heroes as you want. Now I already, I used to do this better. My top score is 265 out of 275. So I got all the rewards and this is like a bunch of extra Valor. These are the Palantir views. That will soon be discontinued. And that's basically it. Oh, and apparently I completed a challenge. So, yet another 100 Valor points for that. So, that's nice. So, guys, that's it. The first quest of the Shadows Reached. I hope you enjoyed it. I will soon continue with the second one. Probably with the same starter deck, just so you can see what this deck is about and what it what is good at and what is not so good at, and then later on maybe I'll craft some different decks and just do the same stories again. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye bye.